Right, I'm a librarian and um, I'm here to talk about books, but not print books. Um, I work at the Open University and we don't ha um, I hardly ever handle a print book in my day job. Um, I'm going to be talking about online books, both e-books and audio books. And um, they are a great way of revising if you're learning a language. And there are lots of e-books around which you can use. So, for example, an e-book will introduce um, new vocabulary in context, it will help you to remember grammatical structures, it will give you a feel for the rhythm of the language. And if it's a good story, what's not to like? Um, but it could be a bit expensive because, um, you know, foreign language e-books do tend to cost a bit more. So I'm here to give you a couple of ideas about ways you can find lots of free e-books legally on the internet. Um, I'm first going to talk about the um, language institutes in London, um, the Institut Francais, the Goethe Institute and the Cervantes Institute, which um, have been around for a long time and have had excellent physical libraries for many years. Um, they've recently started making some of their collections available online and uh, Culture Tech, which is the Institut Francais, has an amazing collection of audiovisual materials as well as many e-books, many of which are actually currently available. Um, they're not um, old e-books and um, it's a really good source of um, reading material. Um, the Goethe Institute and the Cervantes Institute um, for Spanish have um, been around for a little less time than um, the Institut Francais, but they also offer e-books, both audio books and um, available online, and newspapers and other material as well. And um, the Institut Francais and the Goethe Institute make their collections available for free. You just have to sign up with an account with them. And the Cervantes Institute asks for a small annual subscription if you're a student. So that's a really good way of finding current e-books. Um, of course, there's also the internet. You can find lots of e-books on the internet and there are some really dodgy sites around and they are good places for picking up computer viruses sometimes too. And of course, there's the ethical consideration of um, using um, an e-book which may be somebody's income if you haven't paid for it. So um, I generally recommend that you use the well-known public domain sites um, a book enters the public domain usually um, 70 years after the author's death. It can be a little more complicated that, than that, but as a general rule of thumb, that's how it works. Um, and so, for example, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who wrote the Le Petit Prince, came into the public domain just this year because he died in 1944. Um, the two most well-known public domain sites on the internet are Project Gutenberg and LibriVox for audiobooks. Um, both of them have an amazing variety of different languages. It's really worth exploring them. But they certainly have a lot of books in French, German and Spanish which are well worth looking at. Um, LibriVox um, has audiobooks which are read by volunteers. And I must say that some of them are better than others. But um, it is a really a good way of learning a language is to actually read the e-book from Project Gutenberg and listen to it from LibriVox. And LibriVox actually has links to the full text online. So they're both good um, places to look. Um, there are some less well-known ones. Um, so for example, there's Feedbooks, um, Wikisource, and um, some countries also make available e-books um, from their own collection. So, for example, the um, Bibliothèque électronique du Québec is a really good one if you're looking for um, French-Canadian um, e-books, which may not be available anywhere else. Um, Feedbooks is quite a good site too. It's um, a bit less vanilla than Project Gutenberg and it has lots of um, nice covers, so it looks a bit more like a bookstore. And uh, Wikisource um, is really good for obscure stuff. Um, it's not as easy to use as Gutenberg and um, Feedbooks, but um, it has got some um, stuff there that you might not find elsewhere. So that's um, two ways of finding um, freely available in e-books, which are legal on the internet. Um, I just want to quickly cover some technical considerations um, because they are a little more difficult to read than just buying a book or a print book off the shelf. Um, the nice thing about e-books is that you can download them and um, read them offline. 
And that is also the downside of e-books, is that sometimes it's really difficult to know how to download them and find the right app to read them. Um, both Gutenberg and LibriVox um, allow you to read and listen online. So if all else fails, then that um, is one way of avoiding the download problem. Um, they also, um, Project Gutenberg has a wide variety of formats, so you can usually find one that will work with whatever um, device you're using. So for example, Apple product, products use the EPUB format. Um, Kindle uses Mobi, which is available in Project Gutenberg. And um, LibriVox um, uses MP3, which is um, available on most devices. Um, actually, if I'm having trouble finding the right app, I usually just Google it. And usually someone somewhere has had the same problem and found a solution. So that's uh, my advice. Um, if you can find a good story, at some point you find that you're actually reading the story for um, the, the subject. Um, I find that um, when I'm reading in a foreign language, I become so engrossed that I can't actually... I don't notice that I'm reading in a foreign language. I'm just in, so involved in the story. And I think that's a really great way to learn.